Howdy, y'all, and Merry Christmas Eve. Wait, no, Happy Christmas Eve. Why do we say Merry Christmas, but we say Happy Christmas Eve? Well, my mind's sufficiently blown. Today is the controller. Woo! Um, and tomorrow will be the final showcase. Don't forget that one. And if you want to see the previous videos, I will put a link in the description to the playlist. They'll have them all, and I will put a link in the description to my Instagram account, which will have HD pictures of everything I've built so far. Now, the controller I'm building will be based slightly on the old Markland controllers. Here's a picture of one. Now, just like the old C5 Christmas lights, which I have quite a few of, the bulbs essentially bring down the voltage to a usable level. And just like the C5 Christmas lights where they have eight bulbs in them, essentially the power, rather than being distributed to every bulb individually, it's divided up in between them. So it, so those aren't 120 volt bulbs on a C5 string. They're, they're an eighth of that power because there's eight bulbs. These light bulbs on the Marklin essentially work the same way. Now... My bulbs aren't actually going to do anything, they're just going to be decorative. The other thing I'm going to do, I mean, the, the whole controller is going to be based around turn-of-the-century controllers and stuff like the old uh, Lionel multi-volts and, and basically that sort of design. But I'm also adding a whistle directly into the controller. I actually can't find a train, or at least not an O-scale train, that works quite like that, except for cheap electronic ones. Most of them, either the whistle is in the tender or it's in a, a whistle station. I'm putting it in the controller itself. I considered putting it in the station, but ultimately I decided not to. I, I didn't want the station to be quite that big. It, I think it's about four and a half inches long, so it's better suited for the controller. Plus, less wires, which is always a nice thing under the Christmas tree. So, the first thing I got to do is rip apart the 1980s Lionel controller I bought to see exactly how it works. Fast motion away! Okay, so we have the bottom of our transformer here. Um, I thought that this would be a separate piece that came off. This is very different than a couple of the others I've restored. So it's going to be a challenge to make this actually work. But I've got a couple ideas, and I think, I think I'll manage my way through it. This is the whistle. This, oh, well, I just disconnected it. Oh, well, I just disconnected all the way around. Hold on. This is the whistle. You got a motor on top. This does not have a relay switch, but I don't need a relay switch for how I'm mounting it because it's not going to be remotely operated. It's going to be directly connected to the transformer. And then the bottom is just basically a big chamber. Air goes through the turbine. It's got two outlets there to make the sound. So, if I hook it up and press it right along here, and I'll solder this permanently once everything's done, and then uh, I can put a switch in between that when I press it, it'll essentially just turn this on for as long as I'm holding it. So. Not bad. A lot of these don't work right out of the box. This one seems to be working quite well. Could use cleaned up a bit and I might grease it while I'm doing everything else. It looks like it'd be pretty easy to take apart. So I might do that just to just to make sure it keeps working for, well, the rest of time.
Alright, so this is basically how this controller is going to work. You have the transformer in the back and the whistle in the front. Um, I, could, I couldn't really do it the other way around, which is what I originally was going to do because it would have looked kind of funny. So, this is going to be the best method. I put rubber grommets on the bottom of this. And that's for two things. One is it keeps this high enough so that the airflow can get through the little fan motor blower. And two is that it helps reduce motor noise being transferred down and amplified. So that's something that we wanted to do because there is quite a bit of motor noise and it shouldn't be too bad with this sitting on carpet. But the switch here... I've, I've had this switched for years, and I have never found a use for it. And finally, I'm going to get to. This is going to go through a hole in the front so that I can just boop, 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 boop. Right now, it sounds like I'm telegraphing. Um, Timmy's down the well, they say. <laughs> I left the casing this was in. I wasn't going to build a new casing, but honestly, it fits in here pretty well, so... I kind of thought it's silly not to just leave it as it is. It will be painted. I'm thinking this is all going to be painted black, but I haven't quite decided. I did put on a nice gold-colored cord, Raylon, I believe, which is why it's shiny. And I put on a regular end. Now, I know considering I'm making this turn of the century, the end probably should look something... More like that. This is to the uh, lamp that sits up on the shelf up there. Um, but for now, I'm just leaving that regular end on. It's close enough. I mean, 1915, that's still sort of turn of the century. Uh, that's when I believe those came along off the top of my head. So now I am going to have to build a completely new lever which is going to be quite interesting so that this can go up through the top of this but I think it's doable and this is the top. That's two bulbs mounted. I just got two little sockets that I put through and the new lever will essentially sit somewhere like there and go through there and then there'll be two side posts over here to connect to the track. Now this will of course sit up here and there will be metal wrapped around the outside I'm not sure if I'm going to use some sort of perforated metal or if it's going to be solid metal with a couple holes for the for the uh, little lever and for the this side of the whistle to blow out I'm not sure yet I gotta kinda look to see what's available before I decide but you know, you'll, you'll see that in fast motion as I go. Now, wiring-wise, I've got to do these a little differently, and I'm, I'm going to be doing them in a spirit of the old Marklin controllers. These are 6 watt, which doesn't sound like a lot, but believe it or not, they are too bright. The light is just too harsh and intense. So, how do I fix that? I'm not going to add a big uh, transformer to lower the voltage, so, I'm going to do what the original Marklin set did, and instead of having two wires essentially going to each, there's going to be one wire going to the brass here, one wire going from the post to this post, and then one wire going from the brass here. So that will reduce the voltage and the uh, watts and the brightness by half. I think it should be just about perfect for a nice yellow glow. It does mean that if one of these burn out, neither of them will work, but that's okay. If you're reducing if you're reducing the power to the bulb to begin with, chances are it'll last much, much longer than it was originally intended for, so
So this is basically how the chassis is going to work. Got two wood pieces over here that are going to be connected to the bottom with screws so I can take it apart and work on it at any given point. And metal will just wrap all the way around here leaving a nice little lip at the bottom for cooling. Now that lip's going to be kind of cut off by the wood over here but it shouldn't really affect it. I'm also going to have to drill or cut I should say with the Dremel two holes one for this I think if there's enough room I might not have to I'll have to wait till I actually build it to find out but I'll definitely need a hole for the switch. After literal weeks of working on my train set, it is complete. And I am very happy. My hands have so many cuts on them and scrapes and red marks from, from metal working that I am very pleased to be done with this. Although it is probably my favorite project I've ever done. Now as for the controller, as you saw in the video, this is uh, wood on the top, metal falls around the side. It's got a separate base down here, which is also wood. So all of the top and the bottom is non-conductive. It made it a bit easier to wire everything. There is an opening along the bottom here, which is for cooling purposes, but it's also for the whistle. And I just put a nice brass decorative strip down here, some felt pads. Up top we have the bulbs. They are decorative. Well, they do tell you that the power is on since there's no po there's no on-off switch on this. 
It's nice to know whether it's plugged in or not. I guess they're not completely decorative. Though if one burns out, they do both go out because they share the voltage to make them less bright. And I think it's a good brightness. It's just a nice yellow glow. And the top here we have, these are actually uh, hat rivets. Screw in hat rivets that I picked up at a hobby store. And they sort of replicate the old multi-volt controllers. They are 100% decorative. They're, they, I mean, this doesn't even actually make contact with them. It kind of hovers over them. But I think it looks good. I think the arm I made looks pretty good. And you can touch it. It, it won't shock you or anything. But it does have a nice little wooden handle right there. And, of course, you have the brass track connectors here on the side. And the little button right there. This switch is the whistle. Now, I did not cut a hole for the whistle exit. It means that it is a little muffled, but it's still loud enough to hear outside. So <laughs> I, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So all you have to do is when it's on, regardless of what power this is on, it doesn't matter. It's hooked up independently. Not bad. It cost me a lot of extra work and time, but it works. I am very happy with it. I've tested it. The controller is fully working. And I'm done. So before we go, one quick thing. I painted this with a brass felt tipped pen. Um, or a brass leaf pen. Because I made this first before I made the cars. I didn't know I was going to put in these brass pieces along the bottom. I thought it looked kind of weird having all the cars have that straight brass piece right along and then the engine not having that. So I just painted it. It kind of works because this sort of sits at the same level, which is accidental, but it sort of looks like this brass is coming down here, goes down here, and then just follows all the way along. I didn't paint the whole thing brass because I left some of this blue, so I left some of this blue too. It's just a little thing, but I think it brings together the engine a little bit better. Now remember, tomorrow is the showcase video. I'll have the train going around the tree and all that good stuff. So check that out. Thanks for watching. I have got to go bake Santa some cookies and clean this tablecloth. And the table underneath it. Happy trails.